If you're an artist coming from a ZBrush background and you are attempting to start sculpting in 3D Coat, one of the first things you're going to want to know is which brushes in 3D Coat emulate the brushes you may be used to in ZBrush. The clay brushes are easy enough to understand, but in 3D Coat, the pinch brush performs the same function that the Damien Standard Brush does in ZBrush, and that is to sculpt very sharp creases or wrinkles. It's a great tool to use when you are working on a character, so I'll try to demonstrate that now. You would probably use the Damien Standard Brush for creating these outward creases along the lips, around the outside, and also on the inside, you would indent instead of extruding. And also the nasolabial fold here, and the uh, creases around the eyelids, and even on the edges of the eyelids, things like that. And that's where you would normally want to use the pinch brush. The draw brush is similar, and you may want to use it from time to time, so I definitely would experiment with both and perhaps save them as presets in the preset panel if you have it docked somewhere, but you could also access it from the activity bar. And that's the same with your brush alphas and all the other asset panels. Yeah, here in the preset panel, you can use the default subfolder or you can create them based on categories. When you do, you can just simply click in the upper right corner and choose add preset. You could also create a custom variant of a default brush here on the left side by duplicating it and naming it accordingly. 3D Coat will remember the last settings you had for a given brush. Now that we got that out of the way, let's dive right into the pinch brush. Normally, you would pick a draw mode that helps to modulate the depth and probably the radius too. So this first one will allow you to do that. As you can see in the tooltip, it modulates the radius and the depth pressure. Then you may want to use a alpha that has a very sharp fall off. I already have a little bit of prep work done on this layer, so I'll just create a new one. The pinch brush will indent by default. And let me make sure the pinch modifier is turned off so that I can show that it's effectively two brushes in one. It allows you to create an indented crease like that. Let's use the draw brush. And with the draw brush, by default, it extrudes. Outward extrusion will be the default action for virtually all the other brushes. The pinch brush is the one that's the exception. So yeah, I'll hold down the control key so it also indents. Okay, so they're not terribly dissimilar, but when you factor in the pinching effect, then it gives you the ability to create very sharp strokes. You do have tapering, so you can set that to where it can taper either on one end or on both ends, and you can set the length in the tapering panel here. You would have to enable tapering. Once again, after you have made those adjustments to your brush, then you could store it as a preset. So let me go back to the pinch brush and I'm going to enable the pinch modifier. You can adjust the degree of the pinching effect. You could also make adjustments in the add modifier or you could disable it, which would then leave you with only a pinching effect. You can adjust the depth value for just how much you want it to indent or how much you want it to crease. You could also do this by adjusting the degree parameter in the add modifier. So. I can check Invert Tool, or I can hold the Control key while I'm brushing to invert the effect. And just as a side note, a touch-up tool that you could use is Magnify SL. You can also use things like Relax or other smoothing modes while you are holding the Shift key or you could use different smoothing brushes in the tool panel. Now, going back to the Magnify Sculpt Layer tool, the default action is to magnify or intensify the Sculpt Layer information on the selected layer. And as I mentioned, it's going to intensify this crease if I use the default action. But I can also hold down the Control key to reverse that, where it's actually reducing the depth level. 
Another tweaking technique I could use with the brush strokes I've already created is to use the pinch brush once again after the fact to taper the ends if I want. I can right mouse button click and drag on the fly to where I have no depth at all. So it's just going to pinch nothing else. Okay, do the same here. All right, now I'm going to focus on the lips. So again, I will go up with the depth by right mouse button clicking and dragging upward. I can see it reflected in a red profile in the center of the brush. Uh, so I need to extrude this time. So I'm going to hold down the control key. And I'm applying light amounts of pressure. Now, if I'm off here, you know, obviously I could undo. But you can also just go back over it to correct that. Same thing here. Hold down the control key. And then tweak that a little bit if I need. Now, if you want to modulate the entire effect, you can adjust the depth opacity here. I'll create a new layer. With the pinch brush, you do have the option to dynamically subdivide. If you happen to need greater polygonal density in the area of your brush stroke. I'll hit the W key to turn wireframe on. And that will enable me to see the different areas of dynamic subdivision that's already been applied. If I have remove stretching enabled, it will apply a light amount of dynamic subdivision beneath your brush. The smaller your brush, the more subdivision it's going to apply, as you can see here. And conversely, the larger the brush size, the less it's going to subdivide, if at all. If I want to continue creating creases, I need to enable the Add Modifier. And as you can see, again, with a big brush, we can actually create a nice crease without having to add dynamic subdivision. But as we reduce our brush size in order to create smaller and thinner wrinkles or creases, then we will need a bit more geometry to help create a clean result. I just use the erase brush to erase the creases I previously made, but you can still see the dynamic subdivision remains in place. I'll do a little bit of work here in the lip region, starting out without dynamic subdivision, and then I will enable it later on. Now here I have a fair amount of resolution. It seems sufficient enough to do the first pass of creases on the lips. I will now enable auto subdivide and increase the details level to about three. Actually, I need to do a little bit of relaxing here. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. It looks like a little bit here too. I'll now create some strokes. Let's reduce the details level and see what that looks like. Okay, so it's not quite as dense. And so, yeah, that's a look at two brushes that you could utilize in 3D Coat to emulate the damn standard brush. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.